So let's quickly look into what is um, a vision. Now, basically, a vision is simply the sight God gives you, okay, in the spiritual realm. When God gives you an insight into the spiritual realm is what we term as vision. So when you are able to see into the spirit realm, you are able to hold a glimpse of what is happening in the spirit, then it means that you have received a vision. Now, when you talk about vision, you know what? Um, the natural man sees vision differently. And the, the entrepreneur or the business-minded person sees visions differently. But as spiritual people, we also see different uh, visions differently. When you tell an entrepreneur about vision, it's going to bring you a whole business plan, what he wants to do in 10 years' time. Well. But if you are talking about a vision to um, a spiritual person, he wants to know what is it that uh, has been revealed. So visions can also be termed as the revelations we receive through our spiritual sight, through spiritual sight, the revelation we receive through our sight. So um, all of us once in a while have received a vision before. I don't think I'm the only one who functions in that. I know all of us function in visions. A lot of us have seen visions a couple of times. Some have been able to interpret it. Others couldn't interpret it. Others to never even notice that there was something like that, like a vision. Some too, it comes and goes because they don't have the knowledge or the skill in interpreting their own visions or dreams. Now, basically there are four major types of visions, four major or four main types of visions, four main types of visions. Whenever you are receiving a vision, you should understand that this vision can either fall under these four categories of visions. Vision number one is what we call an open vision. Some of you are familiar with the term open vision. Now, it is said that, listen carefully, it is said that, it is said that um, open vision simply means the visions you see whilst your eyes are open, but that is wrong. And others to say that closed vision is the kind of vision you see whilst your eyes are closed. Oh, come on. This is too barbaric and too carnal. Hallelujah. When you talk about open vision, it is simply a type of vision you receive while your mind is active. A vision you receive whilst your conscious mind is active. When we say conscious, please, if you are joining us, mute your microphone or I will mute it for you. Cecilia, do that for me. Yeah. I, I keep on telling them, I keep on muting them. So please, uh, I'm doing it. Thank you. Okay. So what you need to know is that when we say an open vision, it simply means that you are in your right senses and yet the vision is coming, which means that you've not lost your mind or your mind has not been suspended. Let's say you enter a prophetic meeting and the prophet is prophesying whilst making fun or even joking or preaching at the same time. Have you ever wondered what type of vision is that? That is simply an open vision. And that vision, he is doing it whilst his active or his conscious mind is active. Such a prophet, he is fully aware of himself and yet prophesying. It's not as if he has lost senses. No, he is fully aware. I know myself, and yet prophesying. Is somebody catching it here? Now, the second is closed vision. When you talk about closed vision, closed vision is simply the kind of vision you receive whilst your 
conscious mind is suspended for a while or your conscious mind is inactive. And when you say someone's conscious mind is inactive, you are simply saying that the person, the person is at a state where he doesn't really know where he is. And that mostly happens when we are mostly caught up between sleep and staying awake. And most, most people call this type of vision trance. Have you ever experienced a trance? Whilst it looks as if you are sleeping and you are not. And all of a sudden, or you are there, all of a sudden your mind is being carried away to a place you, don't, you can't tell. Is somebody getting what I am saying here? Yeah. So, but people don't recognize that God uses such tools to communicate to us. So we intend to neglect most of these wonderful experiences that could better our ministries and better our lives. So a closed vision is simply what is also called a trance. And why it's called closed is because your active or your conscious mind is suspended for a while. So you are there all of a sudden, it looks like you've lost your mind. <laughs> and before you know it, your mind is somewhere and you are seeing something somewhere. Or you are there, you, it looks as if you are falling asleep, but you've not slept. That is the experience when it comes to close vision. The third one is what we call inner vision, okay? Inner vision. Inner vision is the type of vision that you and I experiences whilst, let's say that the vision takes place inside your spirit. It takes place within you. It's, it happened. It has happened. But you cannot really tell how exactly that happened. So sometimes you are there and all of a sudden, or you see the event now unfolding and it will occur to you that it seems I have seen this thing somewhere, but you cannot trace it. So in other words, it looks as if there is a repetition of the day. It looks as if that day has come before or that event, you've seen it somewhere before. And that is because it did happen in the spirit and you saw it with your eyes, you partook in the service, but you couldn't capture it. It couldn't come to you in the level of um, a, a, a clear revelation that you could understood that this thing took place. But when you got up, and you were moving and you saw certain things happening, it now occurred to you that this thing looks like I have seen it before. Is someone catching it here? So that is what we call an inward vision, okay? And the last one, which all of us know mostly, is what we call the visions of the night. A vision of the night is simply the dreams you encounter. One thing you need to know is that dream is a vision. Dream is a vision. Why is it a vision? It involves your spiritual eyes. It involves your spiritual eyes. Amen. You see? And you see yourself. So this is a vision you, re you, re you receive in, in your sleep especially when deep sleep falls on you, you receive that kind of vision. Now, we are going to be centered more on dreams. You see, dreams is one of the highest form that God uses to communicate to us. It doesn't matter whether you are an unbeliever, you are whosoever, God can use a dream to communicate to you. The dream world is so open for all of us to interact. And if you are here on this platform and you don't dream, it means that you are under an attack. You are really going through a spiritual attack that you need deliverance. 
Hallelujah. Because dreams are very important. Most of us do say that I had a wrong dream, a very terrible dream, bad dream. Some of you label your dreams. I had a dream. Pastor, pray for me. I don't want to be dreaming bad dreams. Listen to me. No pastor can pray for you not to dream bad dreams at all. In fact, our prayer will make you dream more bad dreams. <laughs> And the reason is that it is you who have labeled it bad, but God sees it as it either a warning or something to inform you that danger is coming or something to um, create your awareness that take God because something is about to happen. So dream is a revelation. And now when we say a revelation, how do you what comes to your mind? Revelation is not something that should let you panic. It is something you need to address. It is something you need to either uphold. It is something you need to either select or something you need to use to correct your life. So whenever a revelation is being revealed to you, it is not a time where you should be panicking. Whether you saw yourself dead, or somebody told you that I dreamt and you were dead. You must not panic. You must not be depressed. The reason why I want you to know is that it is just an information. They are informing you about something the enemy is still trying to do or what God is planning to do. What you now have to do is that if you realize that this is the intention of the enemy, then you take it in prayer and you do according to the demands of the dream. And there you will see that you will receive great manifestations or you will be able to cancel that thing that has been revealed, which is about to come to pass. Is somebody getting me? Are you catching the flow? Jesus Yes. So never be intimidated by a dream. You must understand that in the dream world, you are, your, you are the CEO of your dream. You are the CEO of your dream, which means that you are the manager of your dream, if you can say it that way. You are the one who decides whether the revelation will come to pass or not. Okay? It is just like you dreamt and you saw money. A lot of you dreamt and you saw money. My question is, when you woke up, did you see money? <laughs> so why is it that you dreamt that you were dead? And when you woke up, you are running helter-skelter, fainting here and there, looking for who will pray for me. The reason is that it is always our reactions that causes the problem. So now, when you talk about dream, dream is basically a revelation revealed, revealed to you, either from the realm of God or the realm of the devil or a natural dream. Now, let's look at these three types of dreams. First kind of dream, we have what we call the natural dreams. When you say something is natural, what does it, what does it mean? It means that thing is, um, is nature. And uh, it comes from the word nature, natural. And that thing is sensual, sensual. Sensual means that that dream is emotional. That kind of dream came as a result of your senses. So example is that you like eating too much. And you dreamt that they brought you a very big bowl of rice. <laughs> you cannot classify that dream as being um, spiritual because that is your hobby. It is something you love doing. And if you experience it in your dream, it is purely natural. Okay? So you are somebody who loves fighting and you see yourself often fighting in the dream. It is not anything spiritual because it is your hobby. So that is what we call sensual dreams. 
I remember in those times, I used to love, um, eh, 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 let's say there was this guy, um, uh, um, let's say, uh -huh, I used to love watching um, movies a lot. So I could dream, especially this movie called Avengers. Some of you have watched Avengers, Captain's. America, Captain America, what of you, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, 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 of course. Some of you, you want to be so religious. I watch movie when I have the time, okay? Yes. So what happened was that after watching this movie, um, um, I slept and I realized that I was talking with uh, Captain America. And I saw that this man called. <laughs> I saw that this man. Uh, this man, what is the name? There was a man in the movie by name Thor. Thor was chasing me. Hey, not Thor. Uh, Thanos. Thanos was chasing me, and I was running. <laughs> now. This was a movie, a movie that has appeared in my dream. Is that God? No, that is a natural um, dream. So anything you love doing sensually that appears in your dream, you should understand that it is purely a natural dream. I don't think anybody here would love to die. If you want to die, tell us, we'll pray for you. Is it natural for a man to love to die? Never. So seeing that in your dream, you should understand that you have been visited by a demon of death because no man actually wants to die. Everybody wants to. So if you see your desires playing in dreams, please, your last playing in dreams, these are very natural. I don't know if I'm communicating to someone. Yes. So the second kind of dreams is what we call um, the God kind of dreams. Now, what is the God kind of dreams? The God kind of dream is that dream that reveals to you the intention of God, the intention of God. It reveals to you the mind of God concerning you at that particular time or in the future to come. So you had a dream and you were prophesying. You had a dream and you were healing the sick. It does not mean that as soon as you wake up, you will start seeing healing. No. Or you had a dream and you saw that you had money or you saw Dallas. It doesn't mean when you woke up, dollars will be on your bed. It is only telling you that God's mind concerning your life is that in the future or in the nearest future, I would love you to have this, that, and that. Is somebody catching the flow? So dreams announces to you. So even if you also saw yourself dead, it doesn't mean when you woke up, you are dead. What it means is that if you don't do anything about it, you are going to really die. So everybody is in danger. It includes everybody. Mm, it includes everybody, if you will understand the English. <laughs> yes. So as believers, we must understand that in the... Dream world, God gives dreams, and God gives dreams concerning his intentions. Now, what do you need to expect or to know? How do you know that this kind of dream is from the Lord? Number one, that kind of dream, the God kind of dream does not intimidate you. It doesn't intimidate. It rather builds you. Every God kind of dream builds you, builds your what? Your faith. It builds faith. It encourages you. It corrects you. It shows you love. 
it, it, it gives you all the good things you need to know. So I don't think you will ever dream and see yourself casting out dangerous demons and you will wake up and feel like, um, and feel depressed. How many of us will wake up seeing ourselves casting out evil spirits or and will wake up seeing ourselves depressed? Never. Because God is introducing or telling you that he wants you to know that this is the future plan I have for you. So every God kind of dream wakes you up with faith and peace and joy. Faith, peace, and joy. So you, your faith level increases. Your peace, the inward peace in your heart increases. And you feel so loved. And above all, you receive what we call sound-mindedness. You are very sound and peaceful because God has revealed to you. But when the enemy reveals something to you, what you need to understand is that your system, your spirit has a device. And the device in your system, there are three kinds of devices. The first one is your intuition. The second is your um your the consciousness Soda? of your speech. Soda? Yeah. And the third one is the communion aspect of your spirit. When we say your intuition is basically the brain of your spirit. When we say your intuition, hey, your consciousness, the consciousness of your human spirit, we are talking about the emotions of your spirit. And when we talk about the um, communion, we are talking about the will of the spirit. So you see that now your consciousness your conscious, your, the emotions of your spirit has two indicators that reacts to information. One indicator is that when anything negative comes into your spirit, it responds with inward war. An inward war means that it is a sign that it is rejecting that information. So you receive a, a dream and you woke up you wake up from the dream and you are fully depressed. Your peace is gone. Your spirit is just sounding a trumpet to you to know that something has entered your spirit, your spirit man, or there is an information that is not consistent with what God wants you to do or what God wants to see from you. So when you wake up, you, mo you mostly get depressed. That is why when you dream and you wake up and the dream is so frightened, when you wake up, you are depressed. This is more especially to people who dream and they see themselves, um, let's say they dreamt and saw someone sleeping with them. Or they were sleeping, having an affair with a woman or a man. Most often, and when they wake, when they get up, what happens is that they get depressed, and that feeling of uh, of inward war is an indication that this information is not from the Lord. Because when you read, um, when you read Colossians chapter three verses fifteen, the Bible says that let the peace of the Lord guide your heart so the god there is the peace of god which is within the hearts of people the hearts of men that guide their heart hallelujah when, listen it is the most when, primary way god speaks to everyone do you know how zoom meeting works and it is the most primary way god speaks to people all of us, God uses such a thing to speak to all of us. That is the most basic way God used to speak to us. The inward peace and the inward war. Amen. Yeah. So never Amen. undermine Amen. such power. Ne never undermine those two Amen. Amen. 
they are the indicators that point out that something is from God or something has to be carefully watched. So when you see those indications, be careful. You are going to marry a sister and there is an indication of the absence of peace which surpasses your understanding. You don't hate this girl. You don't, um, you, you love her, you, you love her. Everything about the lady is okay, but you still can't find why whenever you are getting closer, there is the absence of peace in your heart. It is an indicator. Yes. I remember there was a lady that I was um, dating and this lady was a very good singer. She could sing uh, and move me. Move me this way, move me that way. Oh my God. <laughs> oh Jesus. And you know prophets, most prophets want musicians because we want people who could sing. And then I thought this lady could help my ministry. So that was it. I don't have any bad intentions towards her. But you see, what you need to understand is that when I, ah, whenever I dream, I would dream and I'm standing with this lady, before I realize someone else will come and hold her hands and they will walk away. And I will be there. And I realized that my peace disappeared. Anytime she comes closer, this is a very beautiful, you know, looking sister. If I'm asked to rate her by beauty, I will rate her eight over mm, something. So it happened that way continuously. Then I just told their sister, I think I can't continue. When I said that, she became so offended, so brokenhearted. My brother, as for the broken heart, we've all received some. It's normal. <laughs> so she became so offended and very worried. Later, later. My colleague pastors were busy bashing me that, hey, how can you do this? How can you do this? She's a wonderful girl. She's, she's a high class, you know, you people now. I said, okay, fine. <laughs> Just in a day. Not knowing that this girl was cheating with me with her ex. You are cheating with a prophet. Can you a cheating, cheating with her ex? She didn't even fear she was <laughs> with a prophet. Okay? So never undermine the inward peace, especially if you are a prayerful man. Yo, especially if you are a prayerful person. So the emotion of your spirit, which is the consciousness of your human spirit, gives you indications in your dreams. Telling you that be careful. Take note of this information. This information will harm you. So your spirit get displeased with such information. So that is the reaction that comes. Let's say Jeremiah, for instance. Jeremiah got to a point in his ministry that, and he said he will not preach about Jesus again. He said, I told myself I won't talk about Jesus. Why? Because the word of God has become to me a reproach, such that any time... I open my mouth, I preach, I prophesy violence. So because of that, I have been, I've received a couple of slaps. And the Lord told him that he is like an iron gate. Jeremiah didn't see that. So the guy wanted to give up. 
Then he said in the chapter 20 of Jeremiah verses 9, 8, 9, he said that, but the word was in me as of fire, shutting up my bones. Most of us preachers uses this term and we preach and we preach and move crowd. And the Bible said, fire in my bones, fire in my bones. My brother, that thing was not fire in his bones. The inward peace left because God disagrees with his decision. So because God disagrees with decision, God, by that time, Jeremiah couldn't have heard God because his emotions have swallowed him. So God brought an indication, brought, took away the peace. So the inward war, the guy was, the absence of war within his spirit triggered him to say that, triggered in, okay, triggered in. And the guy said that, I told myself I wouldn't preach again, but his word was in me as a fire. That word he's talking about is simply um, the absence of peace. Peace was taken, so inside him was boiling. I pray that anytime you are about to take and make a bad decision, let God take away the peace in your heart. Let God take away the peace in your heart. It will help you and it will sustain you. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Yes. So in the dream world, God gives these two indications. If your dream is the God kind, this indication of peace will pop up. If it is not the God kind, then expect an inward war. Now, the dreams about God, the dreams from the Lord points you to what you can do or what the Lord wants you to do. So you see yourself doing great things, yet in reality, you may not have done it. In reality, you could see that you've not reached there yet. That is why some people can dream they are they are doing wedding, yet in reality, the marriage is not coming. That is because God is still giving you an assurance.